Hey, who wants a White Castle burger? Come on, put your hands up. Because I certainly do. But here's the thing. I've never had a White Castle burger. I might have had one of the frozen ones you get, but I don't remember having it. But here's what happens. Max says, hey, why don't you make this? And I go, okay, I'll make that. Max said, let's make White Castle burgers. I said, okay, let's make that. I've never had one. So that's gonna piss people off already. How can you make them if you've never had one? Well, I did a little research. I've seen some videos and pictures of White Castle burgers being made. And we're gonna kinda do that with a couple modifications and why not? It's better that way, isn't it? These are homemade White Castle burgers. Gonna be so good. I think they're gonna be so good. We start with ground beef and the key to a White Castle burger is getting them thin and flat in their little shapes because you throw them on the little flat top with onions that most of you might know, uh, frozen. So we have to prep this and here's how we do it. We start with wax paper because once you get it on here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to live in here until they're all frozen. So give yourself a big enough piece that you can do your work and have enough to flip over, to seal it up. Now we will take our ground beef. And this is perfect because this already starts, well, hold for the military plane. We call that the sound of freedom here in San Diego. I love it. So in our case, this is perfect because I want a rectangle of beef and it's already a rectangle, it just needs to be bigger. And here's how we're gonna achieve that. We'll now take this extra wax paper I told you to be ready with. And we'll give it a little few squishes with our hands and then we'll bring out the most technical pieces of equipment in my kitchen, the rolling pin. This will ensure an even thickness of the rectangle. Like this. I think it will ensure it. Now, here's your question I know you're about to ask. Sam, how big do I make the rectangle? You make it this big. Because we're using Hawaiian rolls. Because why not? Because they're amazing. They're one of the greatest things known to mankind. One of the, one of the best food groups ever. But so that's the size we need. So I'm not there yet. And we'll make it a little bit bigger because they're gonna shrink. So using that as our guide, we will continue rolling this guy out to an even flatness. Check my length, almost there. My width, good, I just need to go, if I could just go a little longer, I'd be almost perfect. That looks pretty good, actually, let's see. Okay, tiny bit more. Uh, pretty close. Now, pull this back. Let's have a look. Look it. Fits in there perfect. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this bench scraper and just even this up a little bit. So let's get this out as a guide. So we'll do this. We're just gonna give ourselves some nice even edges. Same here. Take those guys off. And then this way, take a little bit here, a little bit here, and we're good. Now, part two. Part two looks like this. Now we're gonna separate into our individual burgers. We have a four by three grid, so I want halfway here, like that, and then these guys get down, cut in half. Look, if you're using bigger buns, then of course, measure to what you've got, but this is what I've got. And now this is in threes, so I need to go about here, here, Hey, get out of there. 
Yeah, if you've had a White Castle burger, or if you haven't, hey. Haven't, hey. Or if you haven't, like me, but you've watched uh, videos and pictures, you'll know that one of the things that's classically White Castle about their burgers are the holes. There's indentations, holes, five holes in each of the little burgers. And that allows the steaming of the onion juice and liquid to come up, cook the burgers nicely, impart lots of flavor, but also steam the buns that sit on top. So next, we will use a chopstick end, the fat end, to make our holes. So first, we'll put a hole in the center, like that. You gotta go all the way down. You gotta hit bottom. You're, it'd be better, so much better if you did your left end. <laughs> hmm. Max just asked me to use my left hand, and we know how I feel about this. Okay, wait, so let me just do a quick replay of the right hand right <laughs> in the front of You my don't camera. have to, I know, uh, but here's my point. What if you came around this side? Could you come around this side of me? Yes, technically. Switch. <laughs> Good wow, you little <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Good. We'll continue making our holes. And you got you got to you got to bust all the way through. That's what makes these special. And once you got that, then you've got four holes to make around. It's like a dice. It's, you're making the number five like on a dice. For those of you that have played dice games before or been to Vegas. You know, this is gonna turn out to be like one of the easiest recipes. I mean, apart from the, this, this part, it's really like five main ingredients. Apart from this, because poking holes in the beef is so difficult. No, I meant, I meant apart from like the laying out the beef and then rolling it flat and then making the grids and f you. Sorry, I said I was not gonna swear so much. At this point, we only need to do one thing with this. Put them in the freezer. So, I'm gonna put the top of this wax paper back on, but let me show you something first. Take a look right here. You notice how when I put this on, I was doing my rolling and stuff, this bunched up here. If you're anal like I was when I did this yesterday as my practice, I pulled the paper to flatten this out and then the burgers went and it wrecked them. So I had to redo. So don't worry about that. Just cover this up, get something flat. Hey, hey. Get the burgers on there. And then take this, stop it. Just like this, I'm gonna put it in the freezer. It's probably three or four hours that you need. But I wanted to make sure that they were properly frozen, so I have a batch in there now from, from yesterday. But I'm gonna go put these in the freezer. I'm gonna come back, we'll prep all our onions and our buns before we start to cook. We'll address the buns first. Sorry, the Hawaiian sweet rolls first. We'll take them out. Doesn't really matter if they come apart because they're gonna have to be apart anyways. Oh, the this, this smell. Mm, so good. So, you just wanna cut them evenly. Okay, so these guys are done. Now, it's onion time. And we need a bunch of diced onions. I believe we've cut onions together before, but here's what I like to do. Here's the top and bottom of the onion. This would be the root part that would go down. So I like to cut this way. It's like cutting the world from top to bottom. So here's the root that would be in the ground and this is the stuff that comes off the top. So I flatten that out and I peel off the onion paper like this. And look, I got a jacked up one. We can deal with that. Here's what I'm gonna do. I want these to be fairly small. So I'm gonna make two cuts horizontally in the onion that way, but not all the way through. And then another one here. Then I will take my knife and make cuts this way. I'm cutting up towards the root, but not through the root. This will keep everything together. And now when I turn it, so I've got the cuts this way and I've got the cuts this way, 
Now I get this little fine baby dice. Not that piece. Just like that. Perfect. And I think half of this onion should be fine. There we go. Beautiful, right? Beautiful. Nicely cut onion. All these little bits. So I'm going to take the onions and I'm going to put them on here. Look, the thing about the White Castle burgers is there's this little kind of heated flat top tray thing that they use that contains the onions and the liquids that they're cooking in. Well, I, I can't do it on here. The Evo doesn't have edges, so I'm going to use this. And this is a, just a flat cast iron pan. It's ridged on that side, flat on this side. It's really good for, for well, all kinds of things if you want cast iron. And, and by the way, a grilled cheese that you make with these ridges is fantastic, or any kind of pressed sandwich is great. We'll put a link to this, because these things are really handy if you, if you don't have anything like that. And they're long that you can do long stuff. So now I'll just take some of these onions and put them on here, and I really don't know how many to use. I think that's about enough. That looks about the layout of those burgers, something like this. But now we could stop here, because this is pretty much all White Castle does. There's some kind of liquid, we'll figure that out. But I want a little bit more flavor, so we're gonna cut some jalapeno and add it to those. I got a couple big plump guys. That we'll just do this. Make sure people can see what I'm doing. Then I'll take this middle part out because it's not helpful for our purposes today. Come over here with these seeds. You know, the, the heat, is in the membrane and the seeds. So now we can just cut these guys like this. I'm gonna make these fairly small and then just put them together. And I know I can hear the crying from in front of your screens right now that I'm doing something terrible to the beloved White Castle burger. I don't think this is that bad. Just adding a little more flavor, you know? All right, let's add these to the onions. Oh, I think this is gonna be enough. One's probably good enough to scatter about evenly. Now that everybody's here, now we'll turn on the grill. Now here's the thing. As I've watched videos about these being made at White Castle, I think they're taking onions out of like liquid, I think it's like onions. I think they cut them, put them into the water, and then they use that water. So I don't have that. I mean, I suppose I could have done that. But my thinking is let's use something that will give more flavor than the water. So we're gonna add some beef broth, because they are beef burgers, and a little vermouth for that little extra je ne sais quoi, that little special amazingness that comes from vermouth or wine when you cook. So let's add that. I don't know how much, so. I won't put too much in. So there's that, there's the beef broth, and now here's some vermouth. We need the liquid in there to help with the steaming. Without liquid, there is no steam. And then we cook. I smell vermouth right here. I smell beef broth. I smell success, ladies and gentlemen, is really what I smell. Okay, I can clean this shit up, because that's gonna be probably five minutes. The onions, the jalapenos are looking gorgeous and smelling even gorgeouser. Yes, I know it's not a real word. Now it's time for the burgers. Let's go. And there we go. Frozen. Hopefully this wax paper will come off. Now I just need to break them into their individual burgers. Hello. Thank you. Perfect. It's White Castle time, ladies and gentlemen. This is fantastic. And they each have the holes. Just like a White Castle burger. It's perfect. About the same size, I think. Again, I've never really had one. Okay, let's put them on. Come on, go on, Max. Come on, Max. And we're gonna go three by four. And here we go. One, two, ah, shite. Okay, we're good, three. Go four across. So now, wait, I need some more onions out this way. Some peppers. 
Okay. Let's continue, let's continue, let's continue. And, and, nice job everybody. Making me very proud here. Wonky corner piece, perfect middle one, and another wonky corner one. Would have been better down there, but we're okay. Okay, so now these will now start to cook. By the way, I had to put a little foil wedge because the grill is not completely flat and the liquid is running this way. But what's gonna happen is they're gonna cook. <laughs> That's the whole plan. They're gonna cook. And if we lift one up, let's take this first guy. Yeah, you can see it's starting to cook slowly, but it's not gonna take that long. And part of why these work is the the sauteing onions, and in our case, jalapenos, the steam comes up through the holes and makes them perfect, as well as steaming the buns. So bottom buns go on first, and then the tops. Lewis! Lewis! I forgot to season them. We can do this. Nobody move. I think they season with salt and pepper. So we'll now try and do this. And they only do the tops. Oh, look, this is no problem. If you look right here, can you see right here, Max? You can see this guy's about halfway cooked. Lesser on these ones, but it's happening. It's really happening. Now we just wait. Now we just wait. All right, they're steaming. They're looking beautiful. Everything's happening that's supposed to. Let's cut some cheese squares. So the last thing that we have to do in preparation for these is cut some cheese squares. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a stack of 12 pieces of American cheese slices. But they're too big, obviously. So we want to get these to the size that will fit the sliders when they come off. So, using one lid, one bun that's softening beautifully, we'll just give ourselves a general outline like that and like that. Put this kid back. Can continue its work there. I will make my slice here. Make my slice here. And we're set. These wonky size pieces will go back into the fridge to become the cheese component for all kind of egg dishes because American singles melt beautifully. They're fantastic in eggs. And yes, there's all kinds of fancy cheeses you can use. Fontina and goat's cheese and cottage cheese, which by the way is really good in eggs. But it's hard to beat that. So. We've got about a minute and a half left, and then we prepare, or put them together. It's time. Let's do this. So here's what happens. You go all the way underneath. So now here's your bottom bun is all set up. You flip the kit over. You've got the onions, and in this case, the jalapenos on there. You put a piece of cheese on top. You recenter a bit. You put your lid on. And then you know what you do? Yeet. So, from an outward appearance, it's pretty close, I would think. No? But we the big part, the important part, is this bite right here. Oh, I'm salivating. Mm. You know, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna have a special Saturday episode on April 20th. I'm thinking I maybe should have saved these. But that food will be much easier. But oh my God. And the jalapenos, are just a really lovely little level of heat. They're nothing crazy. I didn't put, oh, anything on this. I see pictures 
of pickles. So I'll cut a little piece of pickle. I wanted a bite plain. And I don't like ketchup. I am a mayo guy, so just a little bit of mayo. Like that. A few slices of pickle, lid back on, now a bite. <clears throat> That's a frickin' slider. Thank you, White Castle, for the inspiration. Thank you, Max, for the suggestion. And thank you to you guys for being here, for watching, for liking, for commenting, subscribing. We appreciate it, as I appreciate these. If you kill that camera, we got a lot more of these we can eat. Let's go.